What's going on, everybody? It's Brian Tripp. Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Live podcast. We interview the very best real estate investors, entrepreneurs, and business leaders all throughout this country. And today, I can't even tell you how excited I am about this guest that we're about to bring on, Mr. George Hegeman, a Super Bowl champion with the Dallas Cowboys in the mid-90s. Guys, if, you, if you're if you a sports nut like I used to be or kind of still am, <laughs> I'm a recovering sports addict. Guys, those Dallas Cowboy teams, first of all, I want to tell you, I hated them when I was in high school. I hated those teams, but you had to respect them. You're talking about Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, Deion Sanders, Michael Irvin, Charles Haley. Like these teams were loaded. This was one of the last, before the Patriots, one of the last true dynasties in football history. And offensive lineman George Hegeman won a Super Bowl championship with them. And I had him on the show. And guys, we just we just had a conversation. And it was an incredible conversation. Obviously, we talked a ton of sports because you know me. I'm a huge sports nut. So if you don't like sports, this may not be the show for you. But we're going to talk a lot about sports. We talk a lot about leadership. We talk a lot about connections and relationships. He got done telling me on, on the podcast that at any time he could pick up his phone and call Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman. He could pick him up, pick up the phone and call him anytime he wants. Imagine if you had that kind of relationship, that kind of connection in your back pocket. What could that do for you in your business, your career, your investing? So guys, sit back, relax. I hope you have as much fun listening to this as I had recording it. I want to introduce you guys to the conversation I had with Mr. George. Hegeman. How you been, man? I'm doing really well. I want to know how you're doing. Tell me, tell me what you got going on. Man, so, you know, I told you uh, the conversation that we had in the hallway at the uh, Wholesaling Summit in Asheville, you made me really think about something that I'm thinking about, but I kind of look at it in terms of you being like that final straw of confirmation, right? Mm. What was that? Was that October? Was that October, yeah. October, November, so. something like that? Yeah. But we were having a conversation, kind of telling you what I was uh, do, thinking about doing in terms of like my real estate investment. But like, if anybody knows me, they knows that everything that I do has to make sense, right? Like, I'm not one of these type of guys that can have uh, a snow plowing business and then be teaching over here and doing several different things over there. Like, the thing about me, like, it all has to make sense and it all has to go together so we were talking and i had already had a transition mindset before we actually met and i was already going through a uh, mental spiritual physical transformation period and it was something that you said that made me think you know what he's right everybody else is right i'm thinking about this wrong and you and what you said specifically was man i just think you're you're thinking way too small like you're thinking way too small. And I was like, why would he say that? And because I honestly didn't think that what I was thinking was way too small because we we're basically just talking about wholesaling in general. And comes out, tur turns out I actually was. I was thinking really too small and I knew I was already not in the right place to do what it, I always felt like I was called to do anyway, which is lead and develop. And and that's not to say that's not to say that where I was from a career standpoint working for the National Football League Players Association wasn't a good place because it was awesome. It was just the message that I have fits an entirely different demographic. And so I had to align myself there, which I did. So to answer your first question, what have I been up to? So since we talked, I've since transitioned from the uh, DMV area, Maryland, D.C., Virginia area down here to Bradenton, Florida. Uh, I'm an academic liaison and football coach down here at IMG Academy, and it has been awesome. It's been it's been awesome in so many ways because when I felt like I was not aligned properly, I, I couldn't figure out why because I felt like I was doing the right thing. I was just doing it for the wrong people. Hmm. Right? And, and I think a lot of times we probably do that more than we think when we're misaligned sometimes, and here's the blessing, the blessing and the good thing is, man, I've never had to like live check to check, right? 
but a lot of us do that and we and we do that because that's just what we have to do we got to pay the bills we got to keep up with the joneses or whatever it might be i just haven't been in that place in a very very long time so i've had some latitude if you will to kind of think about what could or should i be doing to make the most impact right and i think when you can get to that part you know is when you're really making movement so that's where i am right now and I think, you know, to, to add to that, I think that a lot of people are scared to make that jump because of what you just said, because they, they're living paycheck to paycheck and they don't feel sure. like they can. Yep. But you, it seems like you felt like you had that latitude, like you said, to be able to go ahead and do that. Now, now here's the thing. I want to be completely transparent, right? Uh, I am not a billionaire, right? But I do have... Yeah. But the mindset that I have is if I remain in this same place, right, and I just do what's just getting me by, right, then I'm going to always do that. Just get by. And then I'm not going to be able to 100 do what I feel like I'm supposed to be on this planet doing. So you do. You have to just live, jump, man. You got you to gotta make that jump. And, and it's, it's so funny. Uh, Tom Crow. Uh, at the uh, at a wholesale wholesaling summit, they always talk about taking a massive, making a massive impact, right? You know, doing something like right now, and that's what you have to do. Quite quite frankly, you do. You just got to jump out there and just do it and learn it the, along the way. That's the important thing. I feel like we're in the podcast. Can I use all this stuff? I, I thought you already pushed record. <laughs> I see. Uh, this happens like one out of like 20 times. And I, and it just happened to me. The last one I recorded with somebody that we're, he's like, Oh, we're not in it. And I'm like, <laughs> well, we can be in it. Let's, let's be in it. Let's no, in it. I think that this is, um, this is some incredible stuff. And I think it truly applies to so many people. We have so many brand new people that listen to the show yeah. that are trying to get started probably in real estate. Yep. And because it's a real estate investing show, they're probably, they're trying to get started in real estate. And, I, the number one mistake I see, and, and I did this, and I think it's the most natural thing in the world to do, so I'm not faulting anyone for doing this, but mm -hmm. the number one mistake I see brand new people make is they try to make it all about real estate, and yeah. it can't be it all can't about be. whatever you're doing. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do. It can't be about that. It's all about this first. It's yeah, about it's your mind. mind. It's about your mind. And, and George, no, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was I was gonna uh, just follow up what you said. It is it's a total mindset, and and I think the thing for me has always been like I said, I, I do has to make sense. It, it it just does. It can't just be about dollars and cents, right? Because for me, I've always felt like anytime I've ever gone that route, like I've never gotten out of it what I wanted to get out of it, and I've never made the impact that I'm supposed to make while I'm in it. So. You're right. So I'm going to do, I'll do a formal intro kind of uh, off on the side um, and, I'll, and I'll patch it in. But guys, we, okay. are, we are talking to a, someone with a Super Bowl championship ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I From do the have Dallas one. Cowboys, 1994, is that right? Yep, 1994 was my draft year, but we won the last, I was on the last Super Bowl team. We won in 1996 against the Pittsburgh Steelers. 96. Yeah. yeah. See, I just wasn't a Cowboys fan back then. I don't. I think there are a lot of people that either love them to death or they hated them. You know what? It's, it's one way or the other, but the one thing you cannot, and I, I know we're into this, the one thing you can't deny is that we were a dynasty back then, and most people don't like dynasties, i.e. the New England Patriots, right? But the reason why teams like that become dynasties is because they do the right thing over and over and over again. Simple and, and so listen, I, I'm actually, I, I, I feel like I'm super fortunate and I'm not a bandwagon guy. Mm -hmm. I am not, like I'm totally anti-bandwagon. But I grew up right outside of Chicago. And okay. I was going to, I, I, I grew up 40 miles outside of the city. So it was in Northwest Indiana. And I was in high school. I was in junior high and high school during the Bulls run. And wow. I'm Michael Jordan. I know it sounds cliche, but Jordan is like my all time favorite basketball player. I know yeah. it's super cliche, but I grew up with it. Yeah. And I, I got two dynasties. I went to Bama. Yeah. I'm like, I get this. Like, yeah. like I get credit for Bama. I went, I was going to Bama when we were terrible. 
Yeah, and yeah. and now we're going so through this right sides. now. You got, I got, you got, I got, you got, got two, two dynasties. You know what? And you can't ask much more than that. Like I grew up in the Delaware Valley in Camden, New Jersey. So the Sixers have always been my team. So I was there when Joyous Irving was mm. the man, and we won this, and we won the title then. And man, it's just been a flounder since then. But when you're a true fan, I mean, you just got to stick with who you're a fan for. So yeah, and I'm a I'm a lifelong Cubs fan, lifelong okay. Cubs Ooh. fan, and Ooh. nothing but misery. Like Ooh. I would say, even to this day, I love Alabama. Everything yeah. about Alabama baseball, basketball, football, everything. I love Chicago sports, with the exception of the White Sox. I uh. love Chicago sports, but the Cubs were always my favorite team. Even though the years the Bulls were just dominating, the yeah. Cubs were my favorite team, my favorite sports team of any sport. And it was misery. It's pure misery. I'm go, growing up going to Cubs, fan, Cubs games, and it's just like, well, I know we're going to lose. Like, we don't mm. even have any chance of winning. And mm. the greatest day of my life, don't tell my wife that, but the greatest day of my life, <laughs> I, got, I got to, I'm so fortunate, I got to go to game seven of the World Series and see oh, the Cubs cool. live win the championship. That's, that's, that's cool, man. That, that's cool. Interestingly enough, so I know you're not going to like this, but so I – go to a lot of college football games. And last year I got an opportunity to go to the national championship game. And I'm here to tell you, man, like being a professional football player is great. And like playing professional football is great, but the college football atmosphere is different. I, I don't think there's anything better than that. And that particular, game the way that game was played out and being that close up and personal into the action what it showed you and this is me being a coach being an insider if you will just kind of see how seeing how both sides really understood scenarios situations and seeing how close that game was man it was an excellent thing seeing two powerhouses just go after it like that that was awesome yeah. so you know, here's the thing about Clemson like I have so much respect for Clemson and Dabo Sweeney. And, you know, yeah. we've played them four years, four years in a row. Alabama and Clemson have played yeah. in the playoffs and it's yeah. two and two, right? So two maybe, two. maybe we'll two see another one this year. Two and two. I'm, I'm, I'm sure one, if not both of you guys will see each other again. It's, That's just, I can't imagine anything else. You can't, you can't deny how great these programs are, how great these coaches are. And I just have the world of respect, so much respect for Dabo. Well, George, yeah. listen, I want to, I want to, let's, let's give some people some context. We're talking sports okay. and guys, and, and if you, most of you guys who, who've been listening to this show, you know me, I, I bring people on this show who I want to talk to. <laughs> And you just right. get to be a fly on the wall of my conversation. So right. we're talking sports. I'm a huge sports fanatic. Grew up a gigantic sports nut. I can talk very intelligently with pretty much any sport across the board. Yeah. And I have a former Super Bowl champion here. So we're going to talk probably a little bit more sports. But I want you to take, take me back, George. Yep. Um, you, you mentioned you're from the Camden area. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really know much about that area. Take me back to, because I know you're developing young kids right now. That, that's your number one job right now. You're, you're yep. developing young kids. Take yep. me back to when you were that young kid. Take me back to when you were that teenager um, and, you, and you were, and I, I read your bio and I read yeah. up on you and you were, you yeah. are a dominant player. Yeah. yeah. Tell me mindset wise, where were you? Were you the guy that was just, Hey, I, I know I'm great and I know I'm going, I know I'm going to get a scholarship. I know I'm going pro get out of my way. Or were you the guy that was like really trying to work and had the big work ethic? So, so great, great, great segue. So the, the important thing to know about how I arrived where I am today is I've always wanted or wished I had someone like me now mm -hmm. when I was 14, 15, and 16 that I could rely on that I just didn't have. Mm -hmm. So I didn't start playing organized football until I was a junior in high school, believe it or not. Wow. Right? So most of my younger days, I played basketball. I knew – not thought, but I knew I was going to be the next Charles Barkley. Can I pause you I for a second, I, George? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Let me pause you for a second. I, I think what you just said, I've, I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. So I coached D1 college basketball. I, right. I, I coached it. I was at UAB as kind of like a low-level grad assistant, and I was at Troy University in, in okay. Alabama. I was at Troy, spent a year there on a college bench, traveling yeah. the country with college yeah. basketball players. Troy never has ever put a single player in the pros. 
but all 13, 14, 15 kids on that team, all of them. Yeah. They didn't think yeah. they all knew. Yeah, I knew it. They were going pro. So I, I think that that's interesting that you said that. And I don't know yeah. if that's just what, where does that come from? What, what, I, I think, I think honestly, in the types of communities that I was raised in, that is the one way out. Mm. And for a lot of kids, that is that one way out. Not to mention, I was a pretty good basketball player too. So with that, with my size at the time, I'm six, seven now. I was six, five in the sixth grade. So I just thought I was going to at least be six, nine, six, ten. Mm. Fortunately, I went to a camp, right? And this is a great, this is a, this is a great story, even though it's my story. I went to a camp and I'm in this camp and the camp was in Michigan. It was for all the like big men around the country. I remember standing in line to get, we were getting, I don't know, gear for the camp or whatever. And these two brothers were, one was standing in front of me and the other one was standing behind me. And they're having a conversation, Brian, over my head. And I just told you I was six, five, right? They're having a conversation over my head. Both of them were about six, 10 a piece. They were twins. That was that should have been my first sign that okay, I might be in the wrong place. But at the same time, I, again, I knew I was a good player. So it was basically an elimination tournament that we played in, and the players that were in this camp, I mean, they destroyed me. They destroyed me, and 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 I remember leaving. The coaches give you evaluation, saying, "Listen, here's what we know about you. You're an excellent athlete. You play hard. You'll make any college coach happy." Like, we know that much. But if you really want to make something out of yourself from a sports perspective, you might want to try football. Well, up to that point, I had never got down in the three-point stance. Mm. The difference between a left tackle and a left guard, an offensive line versus a defensive line, I just didn't grow up watching football. I grew up watching Charles Barkley and, and, and Julius Irving. Like, they were my heroes. So... Just as fate would have it, I was going to school at the time. I ended up getting kicked out of the boarding school. I get kicked out of the boarding school. A whole nother podcast, trust me. Get kicked out of the boarding school uh, and end up back in Camden in the city. I go to the high school, go to the high school, and all the coaches flood the office when I get in there. And they're like, where did you play football before? And I'm like, I've never played. The basketball coach knew me because I played basketball. He knew me from playing basketball. So they talked me into playing basketball. I mean, taught me into playing football. I ended up playing football. I was, I'm terrible my first couple of games. Then all of a sudden, my athleticism takes over. And, and then I just started learning the game. And at that point, that's when I really started thinking about going to college. I started thinking because everybody around me was thinking, oh, you're going Division I. Brian, I'll tell you a secret. I didn't even know what Division I was. Mm. So when they're saying you're going D1, you're going D1, I'm like, what is – I had to ask somebody, what is D1? It's like, that's, that's Division One football. Like, yeah. okay, so what's the difference? I mean, I know Temple, which is right across the bridge. I know right. Rutgers. I know Syracuse because I love basketball. I knew Penn State, but I didn't know the difference and the importance of going D1 versus D2, D3. Like I said, I didn't have a mentor in that way. Right. My mom was an excellent mother, but she was a single woman raising a 6'5", 300-pound boy and didn't know anything about sports. All she knew was about academics, get your grade. So that's what I focused on. So kind of uh, getting into the weeds a little bit, but I think, honestly, man, the thing that I focused on the most was I knew I wanted to get out of from where I was. For me, any means necessary. I ended up being a pretty good football player, right? Got recruited by every college in the, in the land. Funny story about Bama. I was like, why would I want to go somewhere where they have elephant as, you know, a, 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 a mascot? Like that just, so this, this, this is how green I am, right? Like this is how green I am. I know nothing about the SEC, right? I'm, I'm in the Big East. Everything from a sports perspective yeah. for me, was Big East basketball. So anything I learned, I learned from Big East basketball, which, which doesn't exist anymore. Which Big East basketball at that time was the premier. Huge. Huge. It was maybe the Big Ten, but right. Big East was right. like it. All right. the great teams were in the Big East. Yeah, huge. So fast forward a little bit, 
So I'm in, I'm in high school. I'm a senior now. I, I understand the game. Uh, but I had some relatives that were really, really intelligent people and that convinced me that I need to start paying a lot more attention to what the schools could offer me outside of just what they offered on the football field. Academics, social life, that sort of thing, networking, those sort of things. Those sort of things. So I settled on Michigan, right? I settled on Michigan. I'm going to Michigan. I don't care. I fall in love with Michigan. I got Michigan posters up, everything. Bo Schembechler is the head coach. I mean, store program, right? Everybody's telling me I'm making the right decision. So back in the day, you could only take five official visits. Mm -hmm. Five official visits, and you took them during the winter months, basically, right before basketball season started. Well, Northeast, weather's bad. I'm supposed to go to Michigan. I end up getting snowed out. Now, mm. NC, North Carolina State coach, he was on me. Like, he stayed on me. And he said, listen, now, you know, you guys are going to get snowed out. The Michigan trip's going to get snowed out. Why don't you come to NC State and just come see what we got to offer? What, what you got to lose? Long story short, end up going to NC State, committing to NC State. Commit to NC State, and I'm not going to say the coach's name up at Michigan, but – he was not happy. <laughs> he was not happy. And people that knew the process a whole lot more than I did, they were unhappy. But I'm going to tell you something about that decision. My Michigan decision was based on everything that everybody else knew about Michigan. I didn't know much about it. This is now, remember, this is before the Fab Five. Fab Five actually came the year after. Afterward. Yep. Okay. So I'm, I'm still totally green. I don't know much about this process. I'm actually like faking it like I do. NC State was the only place that I went to where they made me feel like I was going to be more than just a football player. Mm -hmm. And that is so important. That's so important, especially now. The one, so I'm, I'm back inundated in it a whole lot now. Like I'm around the kids every day, which is where I love to be. Mm -hmm. And I always share that story with them because – this thing called social media has turned those types of decisions into a popularity contest as opposed to what it should be, yeah. which is a 40 year life decision. Right. And, and that's, that's the thing that I'm here to do. I am here to help kids not make the types of decisions that's not going to benefit them 40 years down the line, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's an awesome story. Thank you for telling that story. I appreciate yeah, that, George. And I want to, um, I want to tie this back into real estate just, just for a okay. second, if you don't mind, indulge me for the people who are listening, you went on that official visit to North Carolina state and they made you feel North Carolina state in football. Nobody knows who North Carolina state is in football. Right. They, they just don't, especially right. not in that day, early nineties. Sure. Michigan was a big 10 football was just it. Yep. Um, Big Ten football was – SEC wasn't even the SEC. 92 was when the championship came along. But even then, the SEC still wasn't what it is today. The right. Big Ten was, was football country. It sure. just was. Yep, and Michigan absolutely. was one of those blue bloods. Michigan, yep. Ohio State, out of, out, of the, out of the Big Ten there. So mm -hmm. you've got Michigan there, just one of these just powerhouse traditional programs you don't know a whole lot about. I want to equate this to like real estate investing. Say, for instance, this, this might be a stretch, so indulge me for a second. But you go on this appointment and you're meeting with a motivated seller. And if you don't develop rapport and if you don't give, if you don't speak to them in their language, the, they, the way they want to be spoken to, you, sure. if you do, the repercussions are you, they might accept your low cash offer and they might have a higher offer from someone else. But right. they want to go with you. They're right. buying you. They're not right. buying the offer. They're not buying into the offer. So I think that that's really important. It sounds like North Carolina State, they made you feel like you weren't just going to be a piece of meat. You weren't just going to be a football player. Uh, a, a, a thousand percent. And that is not a stretch because I will tell you, I never lead with those accolades, right? But Brian, let's say you are, you, you're, 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 a motivated, you're a motivated seller we make an appointment over the telephone, right? I show up to the house. There's a million things that you probably thought about me before you actually saw. But when you see me, there's a whole different type of mind, mindset that you probably have when you see me. The number one thing is, okay, he has to have played something, right? Something, or he's somebody's bodyguard or something. So 
I usually, here's, here's my secret, which is not a big secret, but here I've, I've learned to use this at my advantage. Um, I let their minds wonder mm. and I let them ask me the question. That's what and, happened with me and you. Right? Exactly. So, and, and but I'm a sports guy though. But, but see, I see the thing is, is that, and I'm, I'm using, I'm using the, my, the last appointment I went on. She told me, you are so impressively large that that's the only thing I wanted to talk about. I didn't want to talk about the house or what I needed and all that kind of stuff. She just wanted to talk about that. So we spent probably about an hour talking about me and what I did and that sort of thing or whatever. But what is that doing? That's building rapport. Totally. Right? That's, that's, that's building rapport. And, 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 and first of all, here's the other thing I want to say. I have not done a thousand deals, right? I haven't. I've, I've transitioned from the DMV to Florida, so I had to ramp back up a little bit. But the one thing I've enjoyed about this process is it's made me relearn the process over and over again, coming to a new territory, right? But you are 1,000%, man. A poor, a rapport is so important. Like that, to me, I think that's the one thing that we all have to do is establish rapport before we do anything else. For sure. So George, I want you to, let's continue on with the, with the story. I want you to continue to kind of think back in your mind to the, to the 15, 16, 17 year old kid that you were specifically, mm-hmm. you know, you just got done telling me that, that you're in a, a single parent household, which, yep. you know, I, I think, I think it's important to talk about this. I, I mean, you're a man yeah. of color yeah, and you said earlier, the only way out, the real way out for you was some sort of, I got to try to figure out how to play professional sports somehow. Yep. And I'm sure you hear that and see that and breathe that and feel that every single day. Sure. But the reality is of such a very small percentage are actually going to make it. And, and even when they do make it, they may have a career, you know, you know, NFL was a stand for since we're not for long, right? They may have a career that, that's not, you know, I, I can think of a, a running back that, um, that played at Alabama and he was there when I was there. So right. I knew that, and he was a starting running back. If you're the right. starting running back at Alabama, you're going to get a shot in the pro. You're just going to sure. get at least a shot. And he did, he got drafted and he had a shot. He only played a couple of years and now guess yeah. what he's doing? He's doing what I'm doing. He's doing real estate. Right, right, right here in, in our home state, right here in Alabama. So right. let, t- take me back to that 15, 16, 17 year old kid because you deal with these kids every day and you have firsthand experience. That was you. Knowing what you know, that such a small percentage of them are actually going to make it. What is your true approach and your true obligation to these kids? I, I think that the transparency, that's the first thing that comes to mind is to be transparent about my entire existence from when I was their age all the way to where I am now. And the reason why I say transparency is the number one thing is because most of what they believe is a lie. It is. Now, fortunately, unfortunately, when I was 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, there wasn't a thing called social media, right? So social media wasn't there to glamorize Mm -hmm the sport or the or or the 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 journey to the sport the way that it is now see the the, the thing and it's and you know too much of anything I, I think is a bad thing let's, let's let's just be honest but a lot of these kids now they can look open up their telephone their computer their iPad or whatever and follow someone's story and all they really see is a snippet mm-hmm Right. And, and the this, best and the best snippet. And, and the best snippet. Think about it, Brian. There's not too many people that's going to put their bad days out for the public to see or their hard days or their dark days. So they believe I have to do is what I see. That's all I got to do. If I do what he's doing mm-hmm. for this period of time and I'm going to be fine. And that's just not the way to go. So for me, it's transparency, number one. But here's the thing. I've, I'm never going to be a dream killer. Right. I'm never going to be a dream killer, because if, if you believe if you believe you can be that one percent, here's a, here's the story behind it. Even if you don't make and I, it's another important thing I want to say about that, even if you don't make it to the league, whichever league. The skills that you develop trying to get there are things that you can use the rest of your life. Totally agree. 
right? The rest of your life. But the thing is, is that there are a few that are fortunate enough to make it there. Now, let's talk about those guys, the guys that actually make it, right? I played seven years in the NFL, right? To a lot of people, that's a long time, right? In terms of NFL, average is about three and a half years. I was able to double it. I went in the league at 20. I was out of the league by the time I was 28. 30 years old by the time I retired. So regardless of how much money you make, eight years, I'm 28, I still got the rest of my life to live. So even if you do make it and you make a bunch of money and you win a bunch of Super Bowls and all that kind of stuff, most of the time when you're done, you're still going to have a whole second half of life to live. Totally. So transparency is the most important thing. I know guys that retire with millions of dollars and have terrible lives, their words, not mine, because they don't have a purpose. So what I'm doing right now is making sure that every athlete that plays and that says they want to go to the league, that they think of themselves, not just athletes, but athletes and. I'm an athlete and. And it's the and part that I focus more on because for the most part, the guys that really want it, the athletes that really want it, men and women, they're going to put in the work. If you show them the path, they're going to do those things the right way. Right. Fate will have it where they end up. But while they're on that road, they need to honestly be thinking about the and part just as much because it's that and part that's going to help them balance themselves if they make it and the game is done or they don't make it as far as they want to make in the game finishes before they need before they want it to. They have to have something else they can transition to and still be happy about it. So I was coaching AAU basketball. We're coaching seventh, eighth, ninth, even 10th graders. Mm -hmm. And my goal, my whole goal, yes, I agree with everything you got to say for sure. But my entire goal for these kids is to get them a scholarship. Right. If we can get them a scholarship, now at least they have a chance to the, the and part. They have, sure. they have a chance for and. Because I was so, um, at that time, I was such a big proponent of education. Sure. Well, let's talk about education now because it's not what it used to be. It's just it not. not. A degree is not. is not worth what it used to be worth. Sure. So, the, and so there's just a lot of different routes. The and can be a lot of different things. Right. What do you tell someone? And, and I want to equate this not just to a, a 17, 18, 19 year old. This could be a 20, this could be someone who did go to college or this could be a 20, yeah. 21, 25 year old who's listening to this right now and wanting to get started in real estate. What do you say to that person? The, the and like what's yeah. what is the and so I, well George because you because you also said you want you want to help them develop some sort of purpose right you said that earlier Absolutely. so so how do what do you do how do you do that so 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 here's the I was just having this conversation with some coaches today and I overheard them talking about well let's talk to George and see what his perspective is on being out of the game so long but but does he still love it and I was telling them I said of course I love it. I mean, I'm going to never not love what I was able to do. But, and the reason being is because when I really, really, Brian, when I really sit down and I think about what I was able to do while I was playing was, man, build like some lifelong relationships, right? Some relationships, man, that ain't name dropped, but I am. I know I can pick up the phone and call Troy Aikman and have Damn. a genuine and have a genuine conversation with him about more things than just football. That's what matters to me. Anything else, right? Michael Irvin the same way. Eric Williams the same way. Emmett Smith the same way. Charles Haley the same way. Right? That Deion was, Sanders the same way. George, it, it's, it's it's it's. Let, let me let me finish the talk because I know I'm gonna forget it. We all talk about this in a way that matters to all of us the most, which is get that camaraderie back right you'll mm -hmm. never get that camaraderie back but if you ask any player what they miss the most they're all going to tell you it's the camaraderie yeah. so to answer your question the and part the and part has to be something that you care about more than just what it does for you it has to be it has to be and 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 we talked about this in the beginning of this man the toughest thing is to separate that and from the I have to, mm. right? When I have to go to work to pay these bills, it's hard for me to think about what I really love to do or what I'm really excellent or great at doing 
very few of us, man, are willing to literally just rip off the rip off the, the scars, man, and just jump in full ahead, full steam ahead and just say, you know what, I'm going to do what I love and just trust that everything I need is going to follow afterward. That's a hard thing to do. So I do that with kids. I, I get them to start thinking that way early, right? Before they have all of the, I don't want to call them burdens, but just life, life expectancies like children and, and wives and houses and cars and all those sorts of things. Start thinking about the things that you love to do outside of playing your sport. Right. And start developing a purpose around those things, man. Everything you need to come after that. It just will. George, you're sitting here rattling off these names, man. That those were some teams. It, you know what? It, it were, it, they were and they are quality people. Right. Let me let me say that. Let me say that first. Quality people. There are some things that I've learned from each of those people without them necessarily saying, let me teach you this. Right right? Yeah. That, that I still, to this day, I can guarantee, I can guarantee, I, I will bet my entire life on this. This is how confident I am, right? You can tell Troy Aikman, I need you here at 3.30. And if he agrees to it, I can guarantee you, he will be there at 2.45, did I say that right? No, 3.15. He is always 15 minutes early. How do I know this? I played with the man for four years, and all I did was watch him. Any meeting he had to be in, out at practice, any social engagement or whatever it was, I just started realizing he is always here exactly 15 minutes early. Like, consistency. So what did I start doing? Brian, what do you think I started doing? Being I mean, there 50, I started being there 30 minutes early. I started – I look. I said, look – if a Hall of Famer is going to start getting some, doing something consistently like that and getting recognized for it, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing. So the things that it is, it's about the relationships you develop, right, and what you take from those relationships and how you pass those things that you learn from the relationships going forward. I'm going to come back to that in one second. I want to, I want to, I'm going to tell a story from someone who told a story. So I'm going to butcher it. I'm not going to get it totally right, but I, I, I want to, it, it's, it's the, the point that's uh, important. So everybody knows Manti Teo. Every, you know, yeah. if you're a sports guy, you know Manti Teo, especially the Notre Dame stuff and the stuff that came out about the, the fake girlfriend, all this stuff. Well, Manti Teo got drafted and he went, I think he played for the Chargers for a while. And then he signed as a free agent with the Saints, the New Orleans right. Saints. And I heard Manti Teo on a podcast probably about four or five months ago, I heard him, heard him talk about this, tell this story. Everybody knows who the quarterback of the New Orleans Saints is. Mm. Probably will go down as one of the top two or three. He'll probably go down as the number one most decorated quarterback of all time, have all the records, pass mm. all of Peyton Manning's records. Drew Brees, he gets in there first day. Manti Teo's in there first day. And he gets in there and it's like, he, he's, he says, I'm, I'm always the first one there. I'm always yeah. the first one there. And he gets yeah. there and Drew Brees is already there. And he's like, how is he there this early? That's crazy. So they do practice everything. And, and man, I tell like, he's like, I'm always the last one to leave. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to hit the weights for like two hours. There's no way someone's going to stay here longer than me. He gets in there and he's like doing on this, this gigantic workout. Yeah. And he went and he was like, he got out. Of, he was like the only, he thought he was the only one there. And he's like the only one there. He's wiping himself off. He's like walking back to his locker and he like does like a double take and he sees somebody is over on the practice field and he's it's so he can see it but it's so far away and he's like who is out there what what is yeah. going on so he steps out there and he walks out the, to the practice field and he still can't really and he like makes it out he's like is that Drew and he's yeah. out there no football he doesn't have a football and he's out there just like visualizing sure and he's taking a fake hike sure. and he's throwing fake passes and throwing and, and like doing going through the whole progression then he go up ten yards. 10 yards further and go through the whole progression again. And he just stood there and watched him for like 30 minutes and just watched him in the corner. And it's yeah. like, I can't believe I was about to go home and this dude's still out here. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just what you got done talking about. Like a guy like yeah. Troy Aikman. Yeah. What is it? Like what, like, is that just greatness? What, what is it about those guys? It, it's not, it's, it's, it's perfect practice is what it is. It, it's, it's each of those guys. I can, I can give you a story about, Every guy that I've played with that is a Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. I, I do. I got to transition to another guy. Right? I just thought of, thought of somebody. Two guys, Derek Brooks. When I played in mm -hmm. Tampa Bay, Derek yeah. Brooks, star linebacker. Right? 
D Brooks is the only person that I know who can show up where and you never see him get there. Right. And, and I'm telling you, he is, he is stealth at it. He, he is stealth at it. And I remember once, once we were sitting in the studio room, I said, Brooks, I said, look, same story, man, I said, look, man, I pride myself on being first. So I've tried to figure out everybody's schedule to make sure I was here before everybody that was here. So I can, so you guys can see me sweating by the time you walk in. He said, well, big fella, but there guys really deep with big fella. Well, I made sure I saw what you were doing so I could get here before you got here because my team. That's his, that, that's his competition within, man. That is somebody looking at somebody great and saying, no, I know I'm greater. Let me do more. Let me do whatever it is I have to do to make myself the player that I know I need to be for these teams. But, man, it is – it is. Here's here's the thing I think most people should understand that's different between – us and them, nothing. Hmm. There is no, there is no great gene, in my opinion. But I can honestly tell you, there is something different about how they approach their twenty-four hours versus how most people approach their twenty-four hours. Right? I can pretty much guarantee you, and this is because I played with some guys that did it the right way. They plan the plan, if that makes sense. Mm. Talk, talk plan, more about that, George. Yeah, they, 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 they plan the plan. So if you know you got 24 hours in the day, there's two ways to approach it. Either you could just let it happen or you can make it happen. Mm. Right? So in that, specifically, this is how it looks. If I know I want to accomplish something tomorrow, I don't just allow tomorrow to show up, wake up at 10 o'clock, and then start figuring it out. No, I'm going to take away some time previous to that, sit down, more than likely sit down with someone who has accomplished that thing, right? Ask them how they do it for input, right? And then create my plan based on the knowledge that I learned from people that have been successful doing the things that I want to accomplish. They plan a plan. They do those things on purpose, and, and you're teaching this to 15, 16, 17-year-olds that are doing it, hopefully. Doing it. Absolutely. A- a- absolutely. And it is, it is the, the one question I get about now, uh, if you know anything about ING Academy, it is the elite of elites. Like the kids that come here, they come here specifically because they have a passion for wanting to be better all around people. So when I came here, I said, okay, what can I add to this already great place? And it was, a lot of it was my experience. And the one question I get is, how do I know that when I transition to this division one SEC school or whatever, that I'm gonna be able to fit in? So our schedule is as such. Everything they do from the time they wake up to the time they go to sleep is pretty much planned. So that's number one. There is some free time in there where they're able to kind of maneuver things around like they need to maneuver. That's where I live. I live in that feel like they don't necessarily have the most control over and show them this is college for you, right? You need to figure out how to manage this time, right, to where it benefits you totally, right? So the biggest thing is, man, you, you do, you can't, if you think about it, and I'll go back to this, the whole 24-hour piece, man. When I first heard that, I heard that from a Hall of Famer, and he did. He told me, he said, look, the one thing I know I'm doing differently than anybody else is I'm taking control of my time because everything else I can get back, but the time part, I just can't. So let me maximize it to, to its fullest. So that's what I'm teaching them. I'm teaching them how to maximize their time and using baby steps to do it. And George, here's the thing. Like, I, you know, it took me until I was 30 something years old to get that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and there are people out there that are right now that say they're real estate investors, say they want to be a real estate investor, say they want to get into it, they want to start wholesaling, they want to start doing this, but you don't even have the mindset piece, right? Yeah. You don't have, you haven't taken control of your schedule, time blocked. Like, yeah. like for me, and, I, and I'm not a pro at this at all, at all, but I know exactly when I'm waking up. I know right. exactly what I'm doing for, for the first two hours of my day because it's the sure. same thing every, same every thing. day. Hey. And, and I don't, again, I don't have it all figured out. But like when you start, to, I read a ton of books. Right. And when you, st- 
after you read about, you don't need to read many before yeah. you start, you know, success leaves clues kind of thing. Yeah, you don't have to read many before uh, they start absolutely. to kind of repeat themselves. Like all these successful people, they're all pretty much saying the exact same exact thing. Same thing. And it's like, well, thing. if they're all saying the same thing and they all came to these conclusions, do you think I'm, what may, what gives me the audacity to think that I'm going to come up with a different conclusion? Yeah. Just yeah. follow in the footsteps of the people yeah. who've already been before already you. Been they before already you. know. Yeah. So we talked about the social media piece, right? Here's my fear with that, right? Now, I love social media. We both use social media a lot, right? So I'm not saying there's not a place for it. But here's my fear with it. My fear with it is, is that it's just cliff notes to what you need to be successful when all of the jewels, just like we said, man, they're in the books. They're in the books. They're written by the people that have been extremely successful. And like you said, they're all saying the exact same thing. So I can just guarantee this. And this is to anybody that's listening. If you pull up probably the top 10 books on success from people that you know have achieved whatever it is they, they're saying they achieved, you go through the first three chapters of it, I'm pretty sure you can find three very consistent things that they're all saying. And if you just take those things and apply them to you over a period of time, you'll be able to see, man, I've made an abundance of, 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 of effort arise because I've, I've, I've applied this. Yep. Most people just won't do that. Books, people, mentors, mentors. people. Talk like, to people. Like, yeah. Totally. Yeah, Before to I let you go, George, I want to I want, I come back to something you already, you spent a lot of time already talking about. I want to get deeper in this one thing that you already talked about because I think this is the key. Mindset's huge. Mindset yeah. is huge. But I, and, and mindset, mindset's probably number one. But this right here, relationships. Yeah. I want to talk about relationships for a second. I call yeah. it, I call it network. Business people call it networking. Some yeah. people call networking like, you know, making friends for adults kind of things. Sure. So, but like, let's really, let's, let's dig into your network because your network is your net worth. You just got done saying that you could pick up the phone anytime you want and sit here and call Super Bowl champions, sure. um, Hall of Famers that uh, Troy Aikman is, you know, if you, if you're too young, you, you at least know the name and you're too young to have watched him play. You're at least all, I mean, you've at least seen him on TV. He's the, he's the, right. the, the number one announcer right now. Sure. Um, yeah. So like, how important is it for just young people, whether they're getting started in business, they're getting started with their careers, they're getting started with, with you at IMG Academy, whatever it yeah. is, they're getting started, they're getting going. How do you really get it in their minds that the relationship yeah. Yeah. is the most, probably the most important thing that they're ever going to take with them when they look 10, 15, 20 years down the road? Yeah, it's an excellent way to close. So, so here's the thing I want to make sure that I, I also – uh, state just as well. Every person that I've named can also pick up the phone and ask me for the very same thing, right? That, that, that's the thing about a relationship. It does not go one way, right? It, sure. it does, it does not go one way. And, and the, the one thing that I've prided myself on is that I have been humble enough and still humble enough to not know what I don't, to know what I don't know. And no, I need to ask questions. Yeah. And sometimes when you need to ask questions, you need to also be willing to work for that answer. You need to be willing to work for that answer. Love it's it. just, you just can't expect people to just do things for you for nothing all the time. So it is, it's very important from a relationship standpoint that that relationship goes both ways. Um, the other thing is if ask not, have not, like you, you definitely have to open your mouth and say and tell people, hey, listen, I'm trying to do X. How do I go about it? And not feel as if, here's the biggest thing. Everybody wants to be a guru, right? Like everybody wants to say they want to be a leader. They want to be the boss. They want to be in charge, but nobody wants to serve. Mm. nobody wants to serve mm. and that that is where you learn everything you learn everything talk about that serving. what do you what do you mean by that you learn everything what do you mean you learn you learn everything through serving so let's just use using real estate for example use a wholesaling for example uh most people want to go out and just buy a buyer's list 
you want to buy buyers this. You want to buy leads. You want to you 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 want to JV with somebody to do a deal and have them do all the work. At, yes, have people been successful doing that? Yes, but not for a long period of time. You need to really get down get down in the dirt a lot of times and figure out how things have been constructed. In anything, all the great people that we talked about on this podcast, every last one of them have stories about how they started from the very beginning, had to ask questions, had to go serve under someone else that was greater than them so they can figure out how to be great themselves. So anytime you consider yourself a leader, and I always do this, when people, when people call themselves the leaders of anything, I always pay attention to what they do on a daily basis and more so than that, how they treat the people up under them. Oh, big time. Right. That's all I do is sit there and I look at them and I, I, I see how they operate on a daily basis. What's the difference I'm, between a leader and a dictator? Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 and, and I, and I know this is, this is, this is a whole nother podcast, believe it or not. We start talking about leadership. Um, yeah. But the thing that I've learned and I'm still learning is when I want to do something humbling myself and saying, okay, I want to do it, but I don't necessarily know how to do X, Y, and Z of it. Let me find someone that does help them do what they do with hopes that I can learn from them and then use that of, of which I've learned, you know, within my own confines somehow. You added a component to that that so many people miss. You said, find the person you, you want to do this one thing, find the person that does it great. Right. And you didn't say pay them. You didn't say, um, you know, just ask them for all the information, a- ask them to give, just give it to you. You said, help them do what they're already doing. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Talk more about that. Yeah. That, that you got to help them do what they're doing. Because the thing is, I either, I either use real examples. I remember when I decided I was going to get back into coaching full time. The first thing I said was, you know what, listen, I'm going to be, I'm going to be responsible for souls, like kids that are trying to do great things. I know what I know, but let me find out what I don't know. So let me go work under some coaches that have done this at much higher levels than I am. And like literally just go there and hold the clipboard for them. Hold a clipboard, do the things that nobody else is willing to do for them. Why? Because all I want to do is just soak up what they have. I want to soak up what they have with, with two purposes. To serve them and make them better, make them as best as they possibly can be. Like, honestly, that's why I'm there. I'm there to help you do whatever it is that you're doing. Just by doing that, man, I can't tell you the gems that I've gotten from people, right? The, Again, just as many players that I can pick up the phone and call, there are coaches like that we all know that I can pick up the phone and call and ask for anything, but at the same time, they know they can do the same thing for me because we've already done it, right? We've already built that relationship and established that type of foundation with each other where we understand, listen, it's not just about me going up, it's about me bringing you up. And the only way you do that is to help each other at some point. And to tie this back into Alabama, if, if we want to, <laughs> I mean, you've got guys like Lane Kiffin, for example, yeah. came and worked for Coach Saban for free before yeah. he became the offensive yeah. coordinator. Steve Absolutely. Sarkeesian for came free. and worked for Nick Saban for free. Why are these yeah. people doing this? Why would you do – these guys have been high, high, high-level D1 head coaches. Yeah, yeah. Why did they come work for a guy like Nick Saban for free and basically hold his clipboard? Because they want they want to know what he knows. They want to know he champion. knows. He's a champion. You just said it, man. We're, who has had the most exciting but the most relevant games the last four years in college football? I don't know. Alabama's the only team that's made the playoff every year it's existed. Alabama. So why would you not? Why would you not? I don't care what you think about Nick Saban. I don't care what you think about Alabama. If nothing else, if nothing else resonates with you, does it not make sense that he and Bill Belichick are best friends? And this is the thing, George. Everybody's hating on Nick Saban and Bill Belichick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're just nothing but winners. They just don't want to put in the work. 
They don't want to put Easy. in the work. You're talking about two guys that that love putting in the work every single day, and they've been they've been extremely successful because of it. Former Super Bowl champion George Hegeman, I cannot thank you enough for coming on our show. You have just absolutely dropped incredible knowledge bombs on our audience. And this, guys, this is a. I know we didn't talk a whole lot about real estate, but it doesn't matter what you're doing. You are in a relationship business. That's real right. estate is a relationship business, just like any other business. And you, if you don't get that right, it's going to be very difficult for you to get anything else right. Can't thank you enough, my friend, for coming on the show, man. Love to come back and talk again. Let's do it. We got to make it happen. We got to get you to Birmingham or we got to sure. get you in front of our people because, uh, man, I know that I, I want, I want to come hold the clipboard for you. I want to, I want to learn. I want to learn, can, man. We can hold each other's clipboard. How about that? Clipboard. Same make time. sure you said clipboard. the word clipboard. Right? Oh. All right. All right, guys, right. guys, we love you so much. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting the alerts for when we have a new episodes come out uh, again. Thank you to George for coming on the show. We love you guys so much. Glad to be here. See you next time. All right.